So as our last reading of the semester, we have a short story called Music by the 20th century novelist, short story writer Vladimir Nabokov. Uh, and from the broadest view, this story seems to talk about the, the impossibility of knowing things particularly the impossibility of interpreting them correctly. If you don't interpret things, then uh, one thing can seem uh, to be its opposite. Uh, things uh, never stay fast. Uh, they change and can't be understood. Uh, the, the story seems to be set in a world where, where nothing is fixed and nothing is available. Uh, to to our understanding, uh, and it's a good f- ending place for us because we began uh, with Rene Descartes at the beginning of the modern period with great modern hopes that we could understand everything, or or at least we could understand what was important to us. We could make life better uh, through our knowledge, and then that would depend on a particular kind of scientific uh, interpretation. Uh, which Descartes called his method, but that we, we'd sort out the true relations of things. We could uh, look at the, the data the world offers us, what, what information does it give us, and we could find the uh, essential truth behind that data. Uh, we could turn that knowledge into understanding our world and making it work for us. That was the, that was the promise. Uh, and... Here at the end, we, we seem in some way to have arrived at uh, the height of culture, uh, uh, an evening of musical entertainment uh, on, among the, the best class of people. Uh, but everything is uncertain and unstable. Uh, nothing stays constant uh, that evening or in the memory of the of the protagonist, the main character. The sure of... Nabokov that I borrowed from Wikipedia. Uh, if anybody deserves the name genius, perhaps uh, it it belongs to him. Thinking, I'm thinking of genius as not merely meaning very intelligent, but uh, with uh, powers of of analysis, uh, interpretation, or creativity so strong that they can uh, make the world seem or perhaps be different uh, to to other people um, who, who experience their creations. Um, a, a genius is somebody whose mind is so powerful that, that they bend reality a little bit. And, and perhaps there's no such thing. Um, but uh, if you were willing to consider the possibility, uh, Nabokov might be a good example of what that might mean. Uh, he was highly intelligent and flexible in his intelligence. Uh, despite, uh, or along with writing a couple of the most famous novels of the 20th century, he was a uh, a master of chess. Uh, he was an advanced student of uh, lepidoptery, which is the study of, uh, of butterflies. And his scientific papers on the lives of butterflies are, are still uh, in the archives of Harvard University. Uh, he came uh, from a political family. His, uh, his, he was Russian, uh, although he grew up in a household that spoke English, uh, and, and he seems to have learned English from his, uh, from his nurse, his, uh, his caretaker, before he uh, properly learned Russian. Uh, but he grew up in a political household. Uh, his father was a Russian reformer before the Russian Revolution. Uh, and an important uh, politician who was uh, uh, assassinated by the, the fighting amongst the various Russians after the revolution. No one wanted to risk having Nabokov's father alive uh, and possibly able to influence the Bolshevik revolution of the 20th century from outside. Um, he was a liberal reformer, but the, the, the Nabokov family was chased out of Russia uh, when Nabokov was a was a young man, uh, and he lived in in various places in Europe and in the United States, as as something like a a permanent exile. His family had been important in in Russia, 
uh, but the, that place disappeared. It was no longer available through most of his life. Um, but uh, he inherited uh, some sort of political understanding, although he was never a, a, a political writer. Uh, but that, along with the other uh, fancy contents of his mind, um, seemed to make him a, a man worth uh, worth paying attention to. Um, he was perhaps second only to the Irish novelist James Joyce as a as a maker of of experimental fictions in the twentieth century. Uh, Joyce pioneered the way of, of finding new forms uh, to make the novel uh, and uh, writing uh, highly cerebral, uh, complex and difficult stories in, in new ways and new styles. Uh, and uh, Nabokov had some successes along the same lines. I like the estimation of him that came from one of my favorite novelists, the uh, the, the later 20th century British novelist Martin Amos, who was a big fan of Nabokov, and liked to divide writers into talent writers and genius writers. And so, so talent writers are able to tell a good story um, and make it realistic and, and hook you in and give you a reward for reading. Uh, genius writers uh, try and sometimes succeed in changing your outlook on life uh, and uh, uh, and are not held back by the conventions of storytelling, which ta- talent writers live by. Uh, but that Nabokov among the genius writers was uh, much more hospitable uh, than someone like Joyce, uh, who's who's always uh, very brainy. He's opera Joyce is operating off a. a, a knowledge of the English language and its history that's far beyond any of his readers. Uh, he's, he's constantly posing puzzles that he doesn't uh, really care whether you can solve or not. Uh, but Nabokov is much, uh, much more gracious and gentlemanly, as Amos liked to say he would, uh, in effect, when he starts the story, he invites you into his, into his room. Uh, he gives you his most comfortable chair and pours you a glass of wine. Uh, that is, he wants you to enjoy the experience. And and we see that in this little taste that the the story it seems is is simplicity itself, uh, and and in you know, given that it's fine literature, it's somewhat out of date, and these things make uh, text not very easy to read. Uh, but given all that, it just sort of goes down by water, like water. It uh, one sentence leads to the next. Uh, before you know it, you've you've finished. Um, and there's nothing difficult to understand about the uh, the situation in another writer's hands. You might say it's quite dull and boring. Uh, but Nabokov leaves you with a, a sense uh, that something has uh, happened beyond, uh, you know, that can't be captured by the events of the story, which are very common and slight. I mean, we can say nothing really happens. Uh, but he, but Nabokov leaves you with a, a thought that there are themes and ideas and intriguing connections that that are are worth sticking with, worth pondering, worth thinking about, uh, even in such a, a story uh, as as simple and easy to understand as any uh, as any de- detective story or love story that somebody might write down. We return to the story. We've we've come. We might say full circle from the early modern authors who promised that with with science and politics we can make the modern world make sense and uh, make it more reasonable, more stable, more productive for ourselves. And we've, uh, with this story, we're more in the territory marked out by by Heidegger or E. M. Forster, the. Uh, the opposite doubts um, that um, perhaps the uh, the world cannot be made reasonable and uh, perhaps our advances uh, are bringing us away from knowledge uh, rather than toward it. But let's get to the particulars of this story. 
uh, the events, as I've said a couple of times, are quite simple. Uh, there's a, uh, a man, he's a young man, perhaps early middle age. He arrives at uh, a party. It seems to be an evening of high culture at the, uh, at the home of some well-born aristocratic people. They, they've got a, a penis, so it seems to be a a famous or at least very talented musician who is giving a live concert in private for the guests at this party. The protagonist arrives a little late. The music is always already going. Uh, he has to at a kind of awkward moment where he has to walk through the through the hall uh, and to uh, to the, one of the last seats available, uh, putting himself on display for everyone uh, and. He sits and the story reveals that he's got uh, a peculiar difficulty, uh, at least given this uh, story, that he's got no ear for music. He's, he's been invited to attend this fancy concert, but uh, the music itself doesn't mean anything to him. Uh, he gets bored, he begins to look around and notice the other guests and then seem to be people he knows uh, vaguely, perhaps not very well, but people he knows. Uh, and then suddenly he realizes that uh, he's in the presence of his ex-wife. As you see the top of the right-hand column, page two. Uh, and suddenly the tone of the evening changes. So it's just one of the sudden reversals, or the, the sudden meeting of everything shifts. Uh, now he's... Uh, in the presence of uh, the woman he had married, and uh, we get uh, the essence of a of a backstory: how they met, how they married, how uh, the marriage fell apart, uh, the the reason for his great emotional disturbance at seeing this woman again, uh, and the while he's in those reflections, while he's thinking back over. Uh, his story and their story together. Uh, the music ends. Uh, he's not sure what to do, but before he has to make up her mind, his mind about anything, uh, he sees that uh, uh, she is leaving. Uh, she no doubt has uh, noticed him. He says he couldn't avoid it. Uh, so she avoids the very awkward situation for them both, uh, and uh, away she goes. Uh, and that's it. Uh, there's a little bit of conversation of the party recorded, uh, but as, as far as the plot goes, that's all that happens. Story, let me just zoom in on one of the details uh, at the very end. Uh, he's... Uh, his his wife has left. The, the crisis seems to to be over, or at least you know all the disturbance is inside the narrator's mind, the protagonist's mind. Uh, he meets uh, a man who's identified by the name of Boke, uh, who says finally uh, to the question, you know, "What was the music? What what did he play? Uh, what you will, as uh, you know, it's it's whatever you want it to be. A maiden's prayer or the Kreutzer Sonata, whatever you will." And those are two completely different pieces of music from the point of view of a of a lover of music, somebody knowledgeable about music, a connoisseur. The Kreutzer Sonata, Sonata is, is one of the the great highlights of classical music. Uh, a Maiden's Prayer is apparently a simple tune that perhaps uh, real music lovers think of as in poor taste or at least not worth bothering with. Uh, and uh, we're left with that ambiguity. What was that music? Uh, it might have been any two of any opposite things. And as you look through the story, you'll find that situation. Uh, anything might have been completely different from what it seemed to be. Uh, you'll find that goes all the way through. Uh, and that's a key to understanding what the whole story is about.